And welcome everyone to Sports Talk Line, where we talk sports 24-7, 365. And on today's episode for Battle of the Big East, we got right in, in the whip, St. John's legend, Marcus Hatton. I would give you the introduction, but we only got so much time to say the least. This is Marcus' second time on the show. If you want the full story about Marcus Hatton, you can go check that. But Marcus, welcome again to the show. How are you doing today? I'm doing amazing, man. I'm amazing. Thanks for having me again for the second second arm um, um, edition. Mm-hmm. It's a pleasure. Tom, you do great, great work with your podcast. I've definitely been fine following you since um, you. we first interacted. Um, man, I'm excited. Speaking of exciting, one of the things I found exciting was the news that came out, uh, I believe it was recently a few, few weeks ago, that you, Marcus Hatton, are going to get a bobblehead from St. John's University. You know, and, and my first question, too, is like, how did that come about? Did they reach out to you? Did you reach out to them? What was the uh, athletic director Mike Craig involved? How did that start? Um, Actually, they reached out to me. They reached out to me about it. Um, We, we already had a great relationship um, since uh, Mike Craig and Mike Hatch has been in. Even they had a great relationship with uh, Chris Mullen. So uh, my ties to St. John's has always been close. And you know when they brought it to me, I, you know I, I was I was definitely grateful. I was honored, and I was definitely excited and couldn't wait for it. It's like something that you can't like describe because it's it's like a, it's it's sort it's sort of like immortality if, if that makes any sense. Like you know what I'm saying like that'll last through the generations. Like you know if the story's being told, it's like okay this kid this guy Mark Tan was a great player at St. John's, and then you know people will be able to have some type of insight about it. You know 20, 30, 40, 50 years from now. Mm-hmm. You know, the one thing that pops into my head is I remember Beanie Babies. And I remember when David Wells threw a perfect game, there was Beanie Baby Day, and those Beanie Babies cost so much. I hope that happens with the Marcus uh, hat and uh, bobbleheads, to say the least. But you kind of touched on it, too. How does it feel? You mentioned the words immortality, which I think is a good word. But how did you feel for St. John's to reach out to you 20 years later after you played? Be like, hey, we want a bobblehead doll day for you. How did that not only not only have a day for you but make this artifact that can live on for the ages how did that feel once you got that news oh man i was blessed i was uh, it was definitely appreciated i was honored um but what, what the feeling that i had you know like now of saying john faithful um for them to get a glimpse of saint john's history and to be a part of it with me like you know like you know we we created history together and now we're here to create it again and you know um now it's more because of social media like yeah. you know it'll be a conglomerate you know because people were like you know social media you said you, you, you're touching millions and millions of people so the beautiful thing about it is that like you know like the people who remember marcus Hatton will probably mm-hmm. it'll probably be dear near to them a little bit more and then to the new generation, once they see it, oh, and they hear and maybe see some highlights or whatever they're going to do, it'll be intriguing to them. Yeah, in case you don't know anything about Marcus Hatton, to those that might not know, I'll just give you a YouTube search. Put up Marcus Hatton followed up by Duke. Okay, that's what you need to look up. I'm pretty sure you'll get that steal. I call it the Teen Wolf moment where you're at the free throw line in a tie game. <laughs> And yes, you get that yes, win. Yes. That's a game that's going to live on in no more time. I think Bobby Packard was on the call, to say the least. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's one of the things, to say the least. But, you know, we have March 2nd against Xavier. We have Marcus Hatton Bobblehead Day. And we already talked about Madison Square Garden, too, with that classic Duke game. Uh-huh. Now, you've experienced this from the player's perspective. What is a more clear home court advantage for St. John's? playing in Carnesecca Arena or playing at Madison Square Garden from the players because you have you have the insight in this not a, like we can give it but you you felt both crowds which one do you think uh St. John's has a home court advantage in that has to be a trick question man that has to be a <laughs> trick question but you know for me because of the name that came with it if, if you you know if you're asking for my opinion you know like I I I I had a thing for playing in Madison Square Garden, which we, we you know, we called it Manhattan, Mr. Manhattan. <laughs> so that that kind of resonated with me because, you know, like, you know, some of the the, the best players in the world played in that building. Yep. From Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, Shaquille O'Neal, Magic Johnson, Oscar Robinson, Larry Bird, and the list goes on and on. Mm-hmm. So to actually have 
a feat Chris Mullen. Let me not forget Chris Mullen. Mm -hmm. To actually have a feat cemented on such a historic landmark mm -hmm. and what is known as the Mecca of basketball all over the world. You know, Madison Square Garden would be if they're all the home games were there. Because mm -hmm. you got 20,000. Yeah. But what is unique about Conaseca Arena now, that over that um, new Conaseca bought mm -hmm. is there. With the stat you see the statue outside, and then you come into the fans, the faithful fans, who are the best fans in the world. Now, what people need to understand about like, like New York fans or St. John's fans is that you know they're diehard fans, and they account. There's accountability for them. If you're not playing good, they're gonna let you know. And I don't think any, I don't think anything is wrong with that. Mm -hmm. Like you know, yeah, okay, you know, just like when you get in an argument with your girlfriend, y'all probably gonna see some hurtful stuff. But at the end of the day, you know, y'all still love each other. Y'all not going nowhere. And then once you get up, once you calm down, everything is back to normal. Mm -hmm. That's kind of how it is with me, with you know I, how I always viewed it with St. John's fans. Mm -hmm. But I don't think we we didn't have we didn't really have that much because I think we kind of overachieved because I think each year we won 20 plus games, mm -hmm. and then we were like right there and about the time Big E. So it wasn't that big of a deal. I think this team, this year's team, has a great opportunity. Mm -hmm. I missed all the, you know, the adversity that they've been facing. Mm -hmm. I still think they can make um, a lot of noise. Mm -hmm. But from a player, you know, I think the advantage goes to right now is um, Carnestec Arena. Yeah. Because you're getting all the St. John's fans, and they're right there on top of the other team. And they're rude, they're cheering, they're cheering you on. And, you know, you're able to um, – it's easier for you to gravitate towards that. Yeah, you know, you know that energy is transferable because mm -hmm. it's what seven thousand, eight thousand here in uh, Conestec Arena, as opposed to spread out nineteen, twenty thousand, and you might get eight thousand from UConn. Yeah. You know, you know how it go. Yeah. So, I think Conestec Arena, in all actuality, will be a great was a great base way for um, segue for uh, St. John. Yeah, for I, the I, yeah. I also think too the other teams are thrown off when they come in there because it's like. Yeah. That, I think because, you know, the Big East tournament's at Madison Square Garden. So you got some mm -hmm. teams that go there three, four, maybe five times a year. And that's not even St. John's. They're kind of used to it. Right. With, with Carneseca, you're not going to get a split crowd. You're no. going to be getting like 100%. And, and, and I think Kevin Willard pointed it out when they played that game on, on campus at Seton Hall and that back-to-back. -back, and Kevin Willard was like, St. John's is used to playing in all these atmospheres and stuff like that. Not like – they used to before. So I think that definitely is a good point. I, I can see both perspectives. It's kind of a push. It could also be, who are you playing at Madison Square Garden? Are you playing Villanova or are you playing another team? Um, so I think those are kind of some things to do. You know, you kind of talked about the St. John season already where you talked about they face some adversity. They've had some ups and downs. Um, but where do you see this St. John's team going forward in this season? Oh, okay. All right. So getting back to it is, you know, you kind of touched on St. John's this season. They had some adversity. They've had some ups and downs. Where do you see this year's St. John's, the 2022 version going for the rest of the season? Honestly, I, I, the last eight games, I love the energy. I love the effort. You know, I, I think they're in a good place. Um, I think a lot of people had high expectations and high hopes, which I'm one of those players, one of those people who had, High, high, high expectations for this year's team. I don't think it's out of the window. I think they can still make noise um, with these next, what, three games they have? I think five. Oh, I think they, they got um, – they're up next. They have Creighton at home. They're on the road at DePaul. They got Xavier, and they're at Marquette. All right, so now, Marcus, I kind of saw a little bit of a teaser on Twitter a little bit. You're trying to reach out to Jay Cole, uh, you're, I believe a former St. John's basketball player, which a few people know about, and you mentioned a potential St. John's tournament team, which if anyone doesn't know, it's a tournament. You get a lot of former college teams come together. Ohio State has a team. Uh, some state, some college from upstate New York has a team. So is there any – Anything, anyone working on getting a St. John's tournament team together? What, what can you tell us about that? 
Um, actually, I am. Um, we uh, we definitely put in an alumni team in this year's TBT tournament. So um, I'm looking to reach out to um, former players to be able the best um, alumni team possible who have you know who's eligible to play. Mm-hmm. Um, definitely is, is, is definitely an exciting opportunity for us. Um, the, the, the people from TBT reached out to us and said, wanted to know if we wanted to put a tournament or a team in the tournament. And, you know, we kind of, I spoke with, uh, Mike Craig and, uh, Zendon Hamilton about it. Mm-hmm. And they gave me, um, they gave me access to be the front runner. I mean, the lead of putting together the team. All right. That, that's great news. So hopefully I, I'm thinking off the top of my head, De- D'Angelo Harrison, Sir Dominic Pointer, Phil Green, maybe get DJ Kennedy and Paris Horn. Cause that, that's the thing. They played for St. John's. They're playing for another team. They got experience in that too. Maybe get Shamari Pons or Justin Simon, Marvin Clark. So hopefully those guys can come up, you know, maybe Justin Burrell, uh, maybe Sean Evans. I'm trying to think. Uh, so yeah, you can potentially get a team together too. Oh my, I forgot Dwight Hardy. How can I forget Dwight Hardy? It's funny that you say that because all those people, I, you know, I've reached out to. Um, mm-hmm. except for, I haven't spoke to Shamari or um, Pointer mm-hmm. or Burrell. But mm-hmm. um, my first, my first, I spoke to Marvin. I mm-hmm. spoke to uh, D'Angelo. Mm-hmm. And I spoke to uh, Lamar Hamilton. And my next batch is uh, Simon, Shamari. Um, I spoke to Omar Cook. Okay. Um, Omar Cook is still actually playing professional. He's still playing. He's still balling. He's still playing, man. Um, and I, and I kind of like you know I know we can have a, a seven alumni, and three like you know any type of players. Gotcha. So yeah. maybe maybe uh maybe we maybe we do get DJ Cat. I had DJ Kenny on my list. Mm-hmm. Also uh, maybe we get more hard to play. Never know. Yeah. You never know. You know? This I, I think I, it would definitely be a sight to see. Right, because I've been watching him, and he's very um, in, in, into like with St. John. Like he's doing a lot of stuff with St. John's. Like he's very in tune with what's going on with um, the university. So mm-hmm. I'm quite sure if he won't play, like you know, he'll be like a spectator or like a um, sponsor or something like that. Mm-hmm. But I'm excited. Yeah, this is a great opportunity. Uh, we definitely will have a TPT tournament. Um, mm-hmm. I'm I'm thinking right now um, if I'm going to play or just coach. But, you know, I think we'll have enough talent where it, it, if I do have to play, it won't be a lot. <laughs> so so you're, no, you're going to give your, your mindset where, you know, you're going to give your exp- expertise in a different way. Unless it's, a tie, unless it's a tie ball game, they need someone at the free throw. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> there we go. You know, and speaking about supporters, hit that like and subscribe button so you can get all this great contact on Sports Talk Line. But now we got oh. – now we got two questions yep. left for you. The first one is, you know, we kind of talked about St. John's. We talked about the past. We talked about the present. What do you see for the future with St. John's? Because you're talking, you've had relationships with both administration and the team. Mm-hmm. What do you see as a former player where St. John's is going moving forward? Well, I mean, they know they know my aspirations and, and intentions. Like, you know, I would love to be on um, the coaching staff one day. Um, I love them. like that's not to say I'm here to replace Mike or anything of that nature. I'm just stating like you know that's that's my next dream. That's the biggest thing for me, to be able to coach St. John's and try to help them get the national championship, be the, their first national championship. So I do have um, intentions and dreams on be, being a part of the coaching staff, um, and you know whatever however I can help St. John's like that's a part of my heart. Like they 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 gave me an opportunity and you know they believed in me and you know it was it was definitely a match made in heaven for I think the both of us. And, you know, I, I just appreciate them with everything. Mm-hmm. All right. And, and I guess the last question, you know, we talked a lot about basketball. I know last time we talked, you had a lot of ventures going on. You're a little bit of an entrepreneur. So Mo Hatton, the entrepreneur, or I guess the person, what 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 do you got cooking for us? What are some things? Oh, going man. On? I have the um I have like legendary life. I have the become legendary brand. If you don't, if for the ones that are, for the people who don't know, um become legendary is my um my business brand. Mm-hmm. Um I do personal training. I have the become legendary fitness. I have the cafe, um legendary lifestyle cafe, um legendary travel group, travel agency group. Mm-hmm. Um just um and um just partner, or maybe partner up with um uh, a life insurance guy, Prime 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 America. If you mm-hmm. you heard of that. So I'm definitely ready to um, come up with a partnership with them. Got the mentoring program. Uh, um, and now, you know, just 
continue to build an empire. You know, Marcus had, you know, become legendary as the empire. Marcus had is the founder of all of it. Mm-hmm. And just kind of be there. Like, you know, I got the uh, likeness sports, which helps, um, which is catered to helping kids monetize off of their name, likeness and image. Yeah. Name, image, and likeness. Also, um, in the NFT game, in the NFT world. Oh, okay. Crypto, cri- yes. Cryptocurrency, too? Yeah. So we already, um, me and, uh, me and uh, a guy, my partner, um, Drew, we are the ones who had worked on the NFT project. We created the first um, Marcus Hatton NFT. I'll uh, post it or, or I'll send it to you. It's on mm-hmm. OpenSea, so I'll send it to you so you can, you know, you can see it. Also, with like, well, um, I have Lightning Sports with our partner with another friend of mine, which is James Decker. Mm-hmm. And we created like the sports to kind of get that out there to help these kids create um, revenue off of their name, image, and likeness. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like I said, you know, with those things going on, and that's just where I'm at, you know. Like, so, you know, I gave you a ton of things in, inside of the entrepreneurial world, which I enjoy. I know it's a lot, but, you know, it comes with it. It's life at the basketball. I haven't found anything that replaced basketball. That you, that you, come basketball close, you come close, You come close. Coming close. Come close. Yeah. But I think what's going to fulfill that is um, actually getting an opportunity to coach at St. John's. So, mm-hmm. I think it's coming. Yeah, well, you got to look, too, what St. John's did. They bought back Zendon Hamilton. You know, mm-hmm. to the staff, which I think is a great thing because he can kind of fill in the gaps and they can know the tradition of it. I think Julian Champagne, who actually Dick Vitale named as college basketball player of last Sorry. week, you know, for ESPN to give any praise to a Big East player, you know, they have to step up. I'll just, leave it, at, I'll leave it at that, especially Dick Vitale. But, but Julian Champagne, his father went, um, to St. John's too. I believe he won a national title on the soccer team. So, so you can kind of fill in too. And I think if the players know the tradition and hopefully that tradition starts coming back where they can do the Lou Carnesecca recruiting budget where he just uses an, uses an MTA card going forward. But, you know. Here's the thing. Here's the thing about that. And then we get finished. Like New York has as a gold mine. Like, you know, it's just about creating that winning tradition back. Mm-hmm. You know, if you can bring that back, and I think I would think kids have a problem with attending St. John's, even New York kids. Mm-hmm. But what do they have to look forward to? You know, like because, like you said, at this point, it ain't. It's not a fascination to play at Madison Square Garden for New York kids because they all be playing PAL, whatever, whatever their PSL, you know, whatever league they have, they already probably playing the championship game or the playoff. You know, there. Mm-hmm. so it's not a, a, a true excitement. All right, create the history around St. John's, bring in the players, let them know that they can create a network and build it in that way, my man. So, yeah, that I think you bring up a good point, too, but I also think you get a lot of the elite high school players going off to prep schools. So I think that's yeah. something, too. If they, if they target, too, I, I think hopefully it can come back. But I'll tell you this, if they're a consistent top 25 team in the next year or two, you know it firsthand. If you win, they'll come. So, but Mark, oh, Marcus, I just want to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule. And if, if you don't know, March 2nd, Carnesecca Arena, St. John's versus Xavier, be Marcus Hatton Bobblehead Day. Hopefully everyone can get one. Hopefully it becomes a collector's item. Maybe you can sign some autographs that day. But thank you again, Marcus, for coming on. And remember to listen like you play with intensity.